Welcome back to our folks who are live streaming with us. So here's the remainder of our agenda. We're going to take a few more minutes to um, revisit the social identity discussion. We're going to um, have a little more time with our friends from the Ed Design Lab until about 1.45. Then we'll have another break so we can all breathe again. Um, and then we'll have some lessons learned from Bob and Dina. And then the much anticipated work plan introduction. Don't panic, it's super exciting. And then you'll have some team time to really start digging into that work plan and thinking about the specific spaces that you wanna prioritize in the coming year. So um, here we go. All right, so my friends who um, I just was having a conversation with um, and I wanted to give some context for how and why this became um, particularly highlighted um, in the space that we've been talking about. So Jamelyn Penn, thank you again, my colleague at the State Board, formerly at Lake Washington Technical College, and I were having lunch a few weeks ago now? Last week, oh, just last week, it's like five minutes ago. Um, and we were talking about the ways that we introduce ourselves, which inspired the exercise this morning. And so what I'd like to do is have Jamelyn share what she shared with me and her perspective on that experience. And then Betsy um, Hasagawa is also going to share um, some thoughts about that. So, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, good afternoon, beautiful people. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah, I had two churros. In a minute, I'll be bouncing off the ceiling. <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Jamelyn Penn, and I do want to back up and have a conversation with you, or talk with you about the conversation that Christy and I had last week. Um, we were talking about introductions, and I was explaining to her that when I am navigating in dominant culture, I typically play along the way that we did this morning, which is, hello, my name is Jamelyn Penn, and I work at the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges, and I am the director of, right? That doesn't necessarily uh, resonate with the way that I prefer to uh, have conversations, even in the title of a renaming of what I do. And so um, we were having this conversation, I was explaining to Christy how I prefer to introduce myself and how that happens, and I'll explain to you why. So typically the way that I introduce myself when it pertains to me in the workplace and my job, I will say, hello, my name is Jamelin, and I serve as the Director of Transfer Education at the State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. Or when I was at Lake Washington, this is where it really came to me in that role I was the dean of, fill in the blank, right? But what I got into the habit of doing is saying, my name is Jamelyn and I serve as the Dean of Health Sciences at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. So those of you who have been in education programs and whatever, you're like, oh, she must be a servant leader. And that's not what it has to do with that at all. I started thinking about that a few minutes ago. It's really a prompt for me. It's my prompt to say, what are you doing here, Jamelyn? What, what is your role? And how are you engaging in that? So when I say, instead of, hi, my name is Jamelyn and I'm the director of transfer education, that's, I'm moving fast. Like this morning we were going at warp speed, right? And I need, had to jump into that and be a part of it. But I really needed to step back because when I have that prompt, what it forces me to do internally is to pay attention, to look at who is in the room, to have authentic conversations with myself about how are you going to engage and build relationships today, Jamelyn? Who will you get to know and how will you get to know them, right? And so when I, when I do that, when I say, hello, my name is Jamelyn Penn and I serve, I'm able to do that. And when I, was as, when I worked as a dean, um, I had a faculty member, several faculty members and students who would ask, they would catch it and they would say, well, why do you say that? You know, why do you say it that way? And I shared with them, one student caught it and, and the student said, well, I, I heard you say that. What does that mean? It means that I want to build a relationship with you and help you to get to know me and me to get to know you a little bit better so that we can work collaboratively towards moving you forward with your education. That was the response that I had with the student. And with the faculty member, um, Monta Frost, I don't know if there's anyone in the room who knows Monta, but she was the, yeah, she uh, retired from Lake Washington as the um, um, uh, Associate Dean, <laughs> title again, Associate Dean of Dental uh, Hygiene. 
programs. And um, at her retirement party, she said, well, you know, I'm going to be sad to see, say goodbye to several people, but particularly I want to talk to, uh, say, um, you know, my farewells to Jay Malin Penn, um, the dean who served, or the person who serves as the dean of, and she gave me this wink, which helped me to recognize that other people were in fact catching on to the fact that I did not leave with my title. And I guess that's the point of it. I am not Jamelin, the fill in the blank as far as my work is concerned. It helps to center me, it helps me to be present, it helps me to take into consideration um, that I have my own needs but other people in the room as well. And then when I get home, it helps me to realize that whole piece around self-care. Because at sometimes we work really, really hard. And there are moments and times where I need to set aside all of that and just be me, right? And I need to be Jamelin mom or Jamelin and really at home, I don't, I don't go by Jamelin, I'm Jamie, <laughs> right? That's what my family, who is this Jamelin person? That's fancy of you. <laughs> Joyce Loveday used to, uh, <laughs> I used to work at uh, Clover Park and when I was at Clover Park, I was Jamie, right? And then I left and went on to other jobs and I suddenly became Jamelin. And whenever I would meet my colleagues at Clover Park, they would say, Jamelin, ooh, that's fancy, ooh. You know, but it didn't have anything to do with that at all. It just happened to be that when I went to the next college, there were four other women named Jamie. Mm. So it was easier to become Jamelin at that time. So those are just some of the things I wanted to share with you. My name is Jamelin Penn, and yes, I serve as the Director of Transfer Education at the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges. Thank you. You can stay up here with me. Take yeah, you stay up with me. Well, so, um, you know, so that what makes what got prompted in me was thinking about how we are people in the role, you know, how we inhabit the role. And um, we are not the role, but we bring what we, what we, who we are to the role. And, you know, so it's like, you know, I, th I think about, um, as a, as a social psychologist too, I think about the projections that the role collects that may or may not be about us personally, you know, individually. And so how you work with, with the projections that you get about your role and, um, and give that, and in some way kind of use that as data about what's going on. So, um, you know, so I, I like that you're doing that. That makes a lot of sense to me. And if I were gonna do that, I guess, um, uh, I, I guess I would say, you know, that my name is Betsy Hasegawa. And you know, sometimes, sometimes um, in introducing myself, depending on what's, what the task is, I might say my whole name, which would be like all my family's names so that, that in, um, in Native communities, it's, it, like introductions is like a big thing, right? Folks who are part of Native communities, it's like, you know, this, like this is me and this is my parents and you know, I'm, the, I'm the son or daughter of this person and the grand, grandchild of, so, you know, so it's kind of like, how do you place yourself in the community? Um, you know, so I'm not gonna do all that, but I would definitely say that my name is Betsy Hasegawa and I'm Betsy Ann Hasegawa, Ann is for my mother. I'm Betsy Ann Keiko Hasegawa. Keiko was the Japanese name that my my paternal grandmother gave me because I did not have a Japanese name. And then I've been adding Sakaizawa, who's, that's my, um, my mother's, um, I knew, I knew her, I knew um, last name. And, you know, so I'm Betsy Ann Keiko Hasegawa, Sakaizawa Hasegawa. And, um, you know, I like the, that, you know, um, I might say I inhabit the role, you know, but I, you know, I like that, that I serve in the role. Um, you know, and then also it's kind of like, for me too, it's, I like the connection piece that it's then in trying to connect to people, um, you know, thinking about connecting it within and across roles and what does that represent for an institution for me and my role to be connecting with somebody else in their role, you know, that that's, that's not just an interpersonal thing, but it's also an inter, inter uh, departmental division. And it's, it's a cross system role. So how do we, how do we also inhabit those spaces? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It's the connective tissue of the organization that that's what, what is the organization because we are, organizations do not exist um, separate of the people who inhabit it, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, we could go on, you know, we, we're having fun up here, so maybe we should stop. Give me the mic. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. Um, so that's what we had to share, but I'm bummed. Fantastic. So I just have to tell you, I asked them like, you know, 12 minutes ago if they'd be willing to share their thoughts about that since Jamelin and I had had this conversation at lunch and then it inspired this. So thank you both for your um, adaptive leadership in that space with me. 
Um, I really appreciate it. They both bring a lot of wisdom to the room, so thank you so much. Um, last but not least, um, I do want to take a minute to just reflect on um, a couple of things that they shared and to remind us all to think about how our language codifies thought and that as we think about the ways that different people are coming into the space and as we introduce ourselves or connect with each other, one of the things that happens, particularly in a deeply rooted hierarchical dominant culture organization like higher education, is that nomenclature matters and titling seems to matter a lot. So I would encourage you to think about that as you are working with your peers and your colleagues, uh, both in your institutions and around the state in this um, exciting and daunting reform work that we're calling Guided Pathways. So thank you again for your time. And I am going to turn it over to our friends at the Ed Design Lab to wrap up their session.